When I was a kid, me and my brother used to spend half of our summer vacations over my grandma's place. My grandma used to live in a small farm city which was located one hour and a half from Sao Paulo, a big city in Brazil where I grew up with 30 million people. And since I was a kid, I've always been a big eater. I'm a big fan of food. I love to eat. And for this reason, I have a lot of food memories that are related to when I was a kid. And every day when we were at my grandma, I clearly remember that we would walk around the block, go to the neighbor, and buy some fresh fruits and vegetables for lunch. The neighbor had his own garden on the back of his house. So this food was amazing. And then we'd come back walking and spend a good hour, one and a half, just cooking. Me, my brother, and my grandparents. That was really good moments. The other half of our summer vacation used to spend at my uncle's place at the beach. There, me, my brother, and my cousins would walk every day from his home to the beach in the morning, and then at the end of the day, would walk back home, would walk back home from the beach to his house. And along this way, this pathway was very beautiful, full of trees, just like this. And many of these trees were fruit trees. And there is my food memory from these vacations. Half of our summer vacation of our breakfast would be just these fresh fruits would pick on these trees. But that was 20 years ago. At the end of last year, I had a chance to go back to Brazil and visit these two places. At my grandma place, the neighbor is not there anymore. And where was before? His small garden is now a small building with three floors full of people living on. And at my uncle's place at the beach, that beautiful pathway that before used to look like just like this, now looked just like this. And this is a normal process. With increasing population and increasing urbanization, some areas need to be cleared up for seed development. It happens at my grandma place, it happened at my uncle place, it happened at my mom place where I grew up, it is happening here in Athens, and it's probably true for where you used to spend your summer vacation when you were a kid. And this is a normal process. Increasing population and increasing urbanization, we need to clear some areas to give space for seed development. It happened at my grandma place, it happened at my uncle place, it happened at my mom place where I used to grow up, it is happening here in Athens, and it's probably true for you guys, right, the place you used to spend your summer vacation when you were a kid. But although this is a normal process, there is a, a few problems with that, and one of them is a food-related problem. Now, food production is being pushed further and further away from where it's most needed, and that makes the access to fresh food more difficult and when you have access to fresh food, it is expensive. And there are three main problems aggravating the situation. So the first one is that land is a limited resource, especially arable land. According to FAO, the Food Agriculture Organization, we need to double our food production by 2050 to keep up with the increasing population. This is going to be especially hard if you consider that land is a limited resource. We cannot double our amount of land to double our amount of food production. The second problem, the second problem is the global warming. Global warming or climate change represents a threat for food security all around the globe. Just here in the United States on the past decade, I can remember of two big hurricanes, Sandy and Katrina. Where they passed through, they devastate everything, put the food security of millions of people in risk. But not only hurricanes, now big powerful storms and long period of drought are more common than before. In 2010, in Bangladesh, a big flood put in risk the food security of 150 million people. This is the population of the entire country. And the third problem is food distribution. Food transportation and food storage can add up to 70% of the final price of some crops. Not to tell that when the food is being transported from point A to point B, nutritional value and freshness of the food just decrease. And one more thing, uh, food distribution represents the main loss of food during the whole food supply chain. On the top of that, when the food needs to be transported miles and miles and miles from the farm to the big city, it is normally applied with a lot of preservatives. And these preservatives are only a fraction of all the chemicals that are on the food. 
because when it's being produced on the farm by traditional methods, it is heavily applied with pesticides, herbicides, and fertilizers. So when you have our not so fresh, fresh food on our plate, we are eating a lot of chemicals that sometimes have no idea about that. So now you're facing a big problem, right? How are we going to do to bring food production back from where it's most needed and at the same time increase food production and food quality? So this is how you're going to do this. This is the offshore farming. Offshore farming is a new paradigm in food production that is capable to produce fresh nutritional food right there, what is most needed at a feasible price. What is the offshore farming? It is a group of floating greenhouses. It basically consists of a floating platform with a hydroponic food production system on the top and an enclosed fish tank underneath. It works as an aquaponic system in which nutrients are constantly cycling and recycling. Here's a little detail how it works. So we have the fish constantly adding organic nutrients to the water. This water full of nutrients will be circulated through the plants. The plants will act as a biofilter, getting all the nutrients necessary to grow and develop, and at the same time, they will allow the water to come back to the fish with low levels of nutrients. And there are several benefits of this system. The first one is that this system allows a sustainable method of food production because subproducts from one process are used to feed the next process. Second benefit is one time it's an enclosed food production system, we don't need to make use of all the pesticides and herbicides that are applied on the field. One more is that one time the food is being produced right there where it's most needed, you don't need to be applied all the preservatives. And one last benefit on the fish side. Fish has the best feed conversion ratio, which means that with 1.2 kilograms of feed, we can produce one kilogram of fish. And do you know why this idea makes sense? Because many of the big cities are located close to large bodies of water for historical reasons. So the breakthrough idea here is to see the, offshore is to see the water surface as a productive area. This way, offshore farm can combine the benefits of low real estate from traditional farm with the benefits of low cost of distribution and storage for urban farm. This is Chicago. Chicago is a big city with 3 million people living on. And Chicago is located close to the big lakes, which has fresh water, not salt water. And for this reason, we decided to adopt Chicago as the first city to implement the first prototype of the first offshore farming. With just one hectare of offshore farming, we would be able to produce 10% of the demand of fresh tomato of Chicago. But we want to use offshore farm not only as a food production unit system. We want to use offshore farming for educational purposes as well. We want to get the community involved. We want to bring the population and teach them about the benefits of health eating. Many kids can grow up in a big city like Chicago without never seeing a tomato in a vine. So we want to bring this touch of fresh food production back to the big cities. We believe offshore farming is feasible today and we know the offshore farming is going to become increasingly important in the near future. Developing technologies like water desalination, salt tolerant crops, and solar energy conversion are going to make offshore farming a reality for salt waters on the next years. And this is really important because if we consider that we live in a blue planet that is 70% covered with salt water, that represents a huge amount of food production, a huge potential of food production. So, at this point, it's basically up to us as a society to decide if yes, if you adopt offshore farming and accept this new paradigm of food production, in 40 years from now, when I have my grandkids coming to spend their summer vacation with me, I might be able to have good moments related to food, just like I did when I was a kid with my grandparents. However, if not, if you do not accept that, I'm scared that in four years from now, when I have my grandkids come and to spend their summer vacation, our food-related moments are going to be stuck in a car, behind another car, behind another car, waiting to get a bag of food that I have no idea what is inside. Thank you. <laughs>